Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Now, one of the questions that I've been asked a number of times has to do with the ZS6BKW antenna, which is widely touted as being a massive improvement over the G5RV antenna. And I've read all kinds of stuff about both, and it's self-contradictory and so on. So <laughs> what we decided to do was to find a set of plans for one on the Internet and build it. And we did that in video number 1352. And the link to that is in the text right below this video. And you can take a look at that. That antenna is still up. I've got some testing that we did, and that's what we'll talk about in this video. So without further ado, let's take a look at a few charts that show how the testing came out. These are the plans for the ZS6 BKW antenna that we found on the internet. The first mistake we made was to interpret this letter right here, this number right here, as an 8. It's not an 8, it's a 6. You've got to look very closely at it. So I had to bring in a, a couple extra feet to get it down to what it needed to be. And the net of it was, we built it, here's a picture of it, strung over here, and then here is the matching line, which is ladder line or window line that I got from DX Engineering. And also at the bottom of it, you'll notice here, there is a current ballon, a one-to-one -one current ballon, and we did put that in place as well. You can get the LDG model for 13 or 14 dollars at DX Engineering. It's quite inexpensive. So let's go through the tests that we did. First on 20 meters, we picked a single sideband signal right here. Okay, and you see that the same signal is in the same places. The two receivers are set to be identical. The test equipment is an SDR plate duo radio. It's a very nice little software to find receiver and they've got some new software for it. And I set the two receivers up to be identical. Now, this up here on the top is my step IR, big IR antenna. And then the one on the bottom is the ZS6 BKW. Now, the thing about it is we've got a vertical antenna versus a horizontal antenna. So are we gonna find some differences? Yeah, there will be some differences. But we find consistent differences on several different bands. I went to 2017, 15, and 10. So let's take a look here. This is the signal strength right here of this signal, minus 68 dBm, comparing to minus 75. So we're about 7 dB difference. That's about an S unit. Okay, now another ratio that's extremely important is the signal-to-noise ratio. And we see that the signal-to-noise ratio is better, and that's this one right here. You want this number to be low, as in negative low. So 70, minus 75 is below minus 68. Now here... 37 dB signal to noise ratio is above the 30.4 dB here. So what we have is a little loss in signal and some uh, loss in terms of the signal to noise ratio on 20 meters. Well, of course, what we always like to do, this is just another snapshot of the same thing. And down here, what we have is on FT8. FT8 provides a nice cacophony all blended together for a three kilohertz upper sideband channel here, we can see about a 5 dBm difference in the received signal strength. And we also see less signal to noise ratio down here than here. And these numbers turn out to be fairly consistent. Here's one on 17. Again, you can see upper sideband, 3 kilohertz across that entire channel. So we're picking up all these signals across the way. Now here, they're fairly similar. The differences between here and here are not worth talking about. They're, they're identical, okay? This difference right here, again, about one and a half dB, that's less than an S unit by far. And so I can say on 17 meters, these are nearly identical. Let's take a look on 15 meters. Here's one here where we do see a significant difference in Again, we're using the FT8s. See a fairly significant difference here, but very little difference in signal to noise ratio. Now, in terms of being able to properly demodulate a signal, what's important is not the actual level, but is the relative level between the signal and the noise.
And here we have 2 dB difference. It's just not that much. So we can say that the antennas are relatively identical. Here on uh, 10 meters, again on FT8, these are nearly identical here. But the signal to noise ratio is 5 dB better. That's almost an S unit better. Okay. Now, I just am throwing in parenthetically here this weird signal right here. Okay. Weird signal time. Normally the ionosons go up in a straight line like this. This is some sort of a signal, if we look a little bit closer, that kind of meanders in frequency. Now it's meandering down. Remember, oldest here, youngest here, typical waterfall. So it started out here and kind of meandered down and sort of curved around. What that is, I have no idea. Now I thought I'd put the antenna on the air. This is 20 meter FT8 and I very quickly had three QSOs. So it does work. It works very well. In fact, it's the antenna I have up right now and the one that I use primary things. Now a couple of caveats. The ZS6 BKW antenna is a lot lower than it's really designed to be. It's only up about 30 feet, whereas the piece of ladder line is much longer than that. So I had to pull it away from the antenna to keep it all in the air and then brought the coax up to it on the other end. If you can get the antenna up higher, I think all of these objections will go away. It seems to be a very good antenna. I've used it on FT8 numerous times and have received good signals, had good contacts on it. Do I recommend the antenna? Yeah, it does work. Now, what would I recommend if I had a choice, say, between an NFED half-wave multiband antenna or the G5RV or the ZS6 BKW for a horizontal antenna? I would go personally with the NFED half-wave. It's very versatile. You don't have to worry about something coming down in the middle of the line that's done at the end. And my tests of that antenna make it about on par with the vertical antenna. Now, the ZS6 BKW, especially if you can get the thing higher, is another alternative. It is shorter. It's a hundred feet long, you know, 46 plus 46, you know, plus rope at the ends and stuff like that. If you've got a hundred feet, say your lot width is a hundred feet, that would fit in. Or if you've got a hundred foot from some point on your roof to the back fence or something like that, it might do well. Be very careful when you're getting near the edge of your property lines that you're not in any kind of a position where you can contact those power lines. So from the test result, I would say that the vertical that I have, which is an outstanding antenna, is consistently a titch better by a half to a full S unit, which is not a lot. If the ZS6 BKW is what you have, then by all means go with it. Now, that piece of ladder line or window line, plus the one-to-one -one ballon, actually bought two of them just so I'd have one to try on another antenna. This is about $13. The bulk of the expense was in that wire. Now, as far as the wire or up at the top, I just used some uh, extra THHN 14 gauge, 12 gauge that I got at Home Depot, and it works fine. Like I said, I've left the antenna up. It's kind of winterish now. There's little snow in the backyard and where there isn't snow, there's mud. So in any event, it's all okay. Do I recommend the antenna? Yeah. If you have enough room, I think I'd go with the NFED half-wave for about the same amount of money as buying that great big long piece of window line. You can go to the league and get their antenna. It's an NFED 40 meter antenna, 40, 20, 15, and 10. And if you want, you can extend that out to where it resonates on the low end of 80. And if you do that, you also pick up 30, 17, and 12 meters. And that's the way I've got mine set up when it's uh, out there right now. It's uh, all neatly curled up in a box. So there you have it. Until we next meet, 73.